Hey YouTube and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you my bloody sneak commando crit build. This is the build I use in Fallout 76. It's the build I use to get high damage. And I'm going to be going through my perk cards, my legendary perk cards, my weapon, my armor, my food buffs and my mutations. I'm just going to be showing you everything that I do to get high damage because I'm able to hit high numbers. And without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with strength. I have Bandolier 30 frame, Fair Arms and Traveling Pharmacy. These perk cards that I just showed you right here, these are all weight reduction perk cards. You do not need this for a commando build. The only reason I use it is because I carry around a lot of bullets, a lot of chems, um, heavy weapons and armor. So I want to get the minimum amount of carry weight on my character. So Bandolier helps me out with my ballistic ammo. I use a rail rifle, so the ballistic ammo for that is very high. Bandolier helps out with that. I wear armor, so sturdy frame helps me reduce the armor weight. Bear arms, I do get uh, heavy weapons. I do carry around some heavy weapons too, so bear arms is just perfect for that. And then travel pharmacy, I carry around a lot of super stim packs and chems to get more damage so traveling pharmacy is very good i also have barbarian barbarian it gives me extra strength which helps out with my damage resistance so barbarian is just very good for that i'm a bloody build so barbarian just comes in clutch with that moving on to perception i use master commando commando and expert commando these three port cards just give you a passive 20 percent more damage so that's why i use them three I also use tank killer because your rifles ignore 36% armor. A lot of enemies in this game have armor resistance. So having this per card on just helps out with ignoring some of their armor. And you also have a 9% chance to stagger the enemies. So it's a very good card. I would recommend it. And I also use concentrated fire. It lets me focus their heads to get more damage. It also gives me more damage per shot so i would highly recommend concentrated fire have it at level one if you need that level one so you can use ground pounder or something like that but i use that level three just to get that little bit more damage for endurance i used radical now radical for me is just very good because i do have a lot of rads on my bloody builds and it gives me more strength the more rads i have if I wasn't using this card i would highly recommend a revenant i would recommend revenant because if you go down and somebody revives you you have a 50 percent more damage for two minutes like two minutes is a long time especially you're fighting like the end game bosses so for two minutes having 50 percent more damage at level two is a very good card so i would recommend revenant if you do not want to use radical for charisma uh, you do use inspirational inspirational is just a card that i use it gives me and my teammates 10 percent more xp it's definitely not a card that you need. If I was to switch around something, it would be inspirational for Revenant that I was just talking about. Put the two uh, two perk points from Charisma into Endurance and just get Revenant. It would it would be more beneficial for me. But I do like getting that passive XP. Strange numbers just helps me out with mutations because I do use mutations and they give my mutations the positive effects on the mutations at twenty five percent buff. So it's just very good. You also need somebody on your team that is mutated. But it's just a very good per card. And Tenderizer. Make your tagger receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. Very, very nice card to just have on. So I use Tenderizer. Moving on to Intelligence, we have Norridge. If you're a bloody build, Norridge is a must have. While you're below 20%, which is what a lot of people have their bloody builds at, that 20% health. You gain 40 damage resistance. Very nice, right? 20% more damage. Unreal passive. If you're a, if you're a bloody build, you're just getting 20% more damage. On like It's amazing. And then you have 50% more AP regen. If you're a crit build and you're always in VATS, this card for that AP regen is unreal. I would highly recommend it. 100% get our rage on your character. Batteries included, I do carry around energy weapons. I uh, have a few legacies, so I do use batteries included just because energy weapon ammo weighs a lot. So this is just to help out with my weight, uh, carry weight in the game. 
and gunsmith, I use a quad 50 crit railway rifle. The gun breaks very fast because I'm having 40 bullets in a clip. I go through the 40 bullets in what, in a, like five seconds. I reload, I shoot it again. The weapon breaks really fast. It's just to help out with that. So it's not breaking mid fight or I'm not spending resources on trying to fix my weapons. So gunsmith is really good for this. Obviously, you don't need to go with gunsmith. Go with whatever you want. For, but for me personally, gunsmith is just what I go with. Moving on to agility, forward operative. Your range sneak attacks deal 2.5x normal damage. So you're getting double the damage. I use a rail rifle. It's a ranged weapon. So this is very good if you're a sneak commando. Would highly recommend it. Sneak. You are 75% hard to detect while sneaking. I have this at level 3 because I want to try and stay in. Um, I want to stay hidden for as long as possible. Just to get more damage off. So having this sneak perk is very beneficial for it. Escape artist. Let's say you're fighting one of the bosses and you do get seen. You won't be getting more like that double damage from covert operative. Escape artist will help you out with that. If you get out of sneak, go back in the sneak, you'll turn invisible for a second and you will be able to lose the enemies. So escape artist is just what I use. I know a lot of people don't use escape artist, but just for me, it is beneficial. Gun Fu, we do be in VATS for a lot of the gunfights, so VATS swaps targets on kill with 10% more damage to your next target. At level 3, this stacks to 10, 20, and 30%, so I would recommend it. I only have it at level 1 because that's just like, you know, I usually try and just focus the boss. I'm never really focusing the adds. So, yeah, Gun Fu, I just have it at level 1. And Adrenaline. Gain 10% to a max of 60%. Damage for 30 seconds per kill. Duration refreshes with kills. So let's say I'm fighting Earl and um, he spawns Wendigos. If I kill 6 Wendigos, I'm going to be getting a 6% damage buff for 30 seconds. Let's say I'm shooting Earl for them like 25 seconds. I then see a Wendigo. If I kill that Wendigo, I'll have that 60% refreshed. So I'm able to keep up the damage. Adrenaline is very good. And I would highly recommend it for this build. Moving on to look. We have Bloody Mess. It's a brilliant passive perk. Where you do 15% more damage. Just all the time. It's a perfect perk to have on look. Bear Criticals. That's Criticals now do 40% more damage. It's a perfect perk to have. I would highly recommend it if you're doing a crit damage build. Serenity Pitity, it is a perfect bloodied perk while below 30% health. So now we're always going to be around at 20% because of Nord Rage. So this is a must have on that uh, build. Gain a 45% chance to avoid damage. That's that's almost 50-50. Like, you know, if I'm getting shot, there's literally like, what, a 45% chance I'd avoid that damage. I'll take those odds. Thank you very much. <laughs> Class Freak. We do have mutations on this class, and some of the mutations do have really bad negative effects, so I would recommend a level 3 star on uh, Class Freak. The negative effects of your mutations are reduced by 75%. Would highly, highly recommend it. Discard. Curator. I do use bobbleheads and magazines to get more damage, so this helps me keep them up for twice as long. I would highly recommend Curator if you do have magazines and bobbleheads to use on this build and starch genes you will never mutate from rads and right away will never cure mutations we never want to get uh, mutations from radiation because we're always going to have radiation so this is one of the perks that i would recommend and also right away we will take right away if we're just about dead and we don't want our mutations gone. So this is just like a must have if you're doing a. I know there's alternatives like Rad Shield that like, you know, gives you the uh, radiation resistance. And it doesn't cure your uh, mutations. So you could use that. But I, I just use Star Genes to be honest. Now moving on to legendary perks. We have a rank 4 strength card where I get 5 more strength. 5 more intelligence. Just because I like having those extra perk cards on my build. Follow through. 
is unreal if you're a sneak commando. Range sneak damage increases damage to target by 40% for 10 seconds. Follow through is very good. I have it at rank 4. I would highly recommend this card if you're trying to do a high damage build. Take one for the team. Enemies take 40% more damage when they attack you if you're on a team. As far as I know, when you're on a team and if you're for a three other teammates, have this card on and they too take damage, you will be hitting high damage numbers. Would highly recommend this card. And as I said, teammates have this card. It does stack with their card too. So would highly recommend taking one for the team. We have a rank 4 luck card, which just gives me 5 more luck, so I'm able to just put more car uh, perk cards on. And then Master Infiltrator. If I wasn't using Master Infiltrator, I would definitely use uh, one of the other special perk cards. But I use Master Infiltrator because I'm always doing nukes. I'm always, like, you know, spawning the bosses in. And Master Infiltrator just ma helps me do it faster. So that is what I use. If I wasn't using this, I would definitely use a different special card just to get more perk cards on my build. Now we're moving on to weapons. This is what I would consider my best damage dealer in the game. A quad 50 crit rare rifle. I'm a, I'm a crit build. Uh, you can sneak with this weapon. You can't put suppressor on it. So some perk cards won't work. Because like I know there's a, uh, there's a perk card that lets you get bonus damage at the night. If you have a suppressor on it. Of course you can't use it. Ultra sight ammo as well. You can't put an automatic receiver on this with ultra sight. So you are stuck with just the normal spikes. But this th gun already does mad amount of damage. Like it's unreal. I would highly recommend. The main perk you're going to want on it is the 50 crit. Because we are a crit build. But the quad on a rail rifle lets you have 40 bullets in a clip. You don't have to reload as much and it's just unreal for damage. I would highly recommend everybody trying to get themselves a quad 50 crit rail rifle. Doesn't need three, it doesn't need to be a 3 star. Every 3 bullets you're going to be able to do a critical shot. So you know you don't need a 3 star. Get a 2 star if you want. I was using a 2 star up until I got the 3 star version. So it's, it's just very good. I would highly recommend it. The other weapon that I do use is an anti-armor 50 crit Enclave Plasma Rifle. Would highly recommend this weapon. Plas it, it, the Enclave Plasma is able to kill Earl in 10 seconds and less if you have anti-armor and 50 crit on it. And a lot of like crit buffs. So I would highly recommend this weapon. And yeah. Now we're moving on to armor. Unyielding armor is what I use. Now, if I was to say my god roll set of armor, it would be unyielding, it would have AP refresh, and it would have weight reduction. I would say the weight reduction, so I could take some of the perk, car, uh, perk points off of strength, put them into something else, but unfortunately, the RNG gods do not look down on me, so I am stuck with what I have, but what I would recommend is if you can, unyielding, AP refresh, Wave reduction armor is unreal. I use leather because leather has very good physical and energy resistance. Energy resistance is good if you're running silos because every enemy, basically every enemy is using some sort of laser, like energy weapon. So I would recommend it for that. But also it is very good for staying in sneak. It doesn't make a lot of noise. Like other armors will make a lot of noise when you're sneaking. Whereas leather armor does not. So I would recommend the leather armor for that. So on yielding. AP refresh. Rate reduction on yielding armor. Fortunately I don't have it. But I would recommend it. Now we're moving on to. Food buffs. Ballistic buck. Improves ballistic damage. By 15%. I would use this if I was. Um, if I'm using my. Quad 50 crit rail rifle, it is very good, it stays up for a good amount of time, and it's just very good for that extra bit of damage. What I would pull with that, which I don't have it on my class right now, is Blight Soup. Blight Soup will give you, with a Horbivore mutation, 50% more crit damage. Blight Soup is very good, I do have a guide on my channel for Blight Soup, so I will link it in the description below. But Blight Soup is very good for this build. You can keep it up for 30 minutes. 
and it's always 50% more crit damage, so I would highly recommend it. For aid, we have a bobblehead small guns, where bobblehead it, it, small guns bobblehead will give you 20% more ballistic damage. If you have this bobblehead, I would use it. It gives you just that extra bit of damage, but bobbleheads are a little harder to find, so I would recommend just using it for the end game bosses. But if you do have a nice supply of um, small guns, I would recommend it. Guns and Bullets 3 is another magazine that I would use. The ballistic gun crit damage is increased by 30%. It's just a very good, like, it helps with that crit damage. I would highly recommend Guns and Bullets 3. It's a, it's a, like, it's a hard thing to farm. But if you do have them, I would highly recommend using them. Overdrive. You can actually stack two of these um, drug type like buffs in this game. Overdrive and Psycho. So Overdrive gives you 50% more damage and 50% more critical damage for three minutes. Overdrive is very easy to make and I would highly recommend getting your hands on Overdrive and Psycho Buff. Now you can either say it takes Psycho Buff or Psycho Tats. It's basically up to you. Psycho Buff gives you 25% more damage. The same Psycho Tats do. But Psycho Buff gives you that little bit of health. So it's not really recommended for bloody builds because it will take you out of that bloody like stage. And that's not what you want. So I would recommend Psycho Tats more than Psycho Buff. But either one works. So if I was to take these, you can stack these, but you have to take Overdrive and then Psycho. Just remember that it's Overdrive and then Psycho to get them to stack. If you take Psycho and then Overdrive, they, they, they won't stack. It has to be Overdrive and Psycho. And last but not least, we have Mutations. I would recommend the Mutations that I have right now, but it's not needed at all. It's definitely up to you. But I would definitely get Speed Demon because it helps you with the reload speed. It's very good for getting more damage out. Scaly Skin, it gives you damage resistance and energy resistance. It's just very good for a bloody build. But it does give you minus AP, so, you know, you do have less action points, but it's very good for the damage resistance. Marsupial helps you jump higher, gives me more carry weight. It's the only reason I use Marsupial is to carry weight and jumping high is very good as well. Cobravore, Cobravore is very good if you're using the likes of Blight Soup, Crimey Relish, Brain Bombs, all of those, it, like, you know, some of them are XP, some of them are crit damage, so I would recommend Horrivore if, you're, if you want Blight Soup and all, but you can definitely go with Carnivore if you want. Egghead just gives more more intelligence. It's not really needed, but it's just what I use. Eagle Eyes also give you crit damage and perception. Just that extra bit of crit damage is always nice. It's a passive crit damage as well. So it's just very good to have. Orbone just helps me with falling. So I don't die as much when I fall off a building. Also gives me that extra bit of agility. And then adrenal reaction. When my health is low, I do more damage. So it helps with the bloody builds. But guys, if you liked what you saw, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And um, yeah. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.